Hello, my name is Jake Ginnivan. Today I'm going to go through what VSTO Contrib is and how to get started. Initially, VSTO Contrib was created to help me solve a lot of the problems I'd been having in, with VSTO. An example of those is the difficulty with the interactions between the ribbon custom task panes and the document that you're working on. There's a couple of terms that I introduced to make this problem generic across all of the Office apps, and you'll see these terms used a lot. The first one is the view. So the view is essentially the window that is hosting the document in Word. So we can have multiple views, which are the windows. So now I've got two views representing the same document. Now the document in VSDO Contrib, I refer to as the context. Now, if you're talking about PowerPoint, your context is the slideshow that you're in. Excel would be the spreadsheet that you're working in. In Outlook, you're talking about mail items, contact items, uh, appointment items, all of the different items you can have. The views in Outlook would be inspectors or explorers. So now we've got two views representing the same document or context. If I want to go to the review panel and then start going, showing the review pane, you can see that the review pane, uh, I click on a button in the ribbon and it shows a custom task pane. Now one of the problems with BSTO is that you've got one class that represents the ribbon callbacks you then show a custom task pane which is registered per view and then you can have a document which can be displayed by multiple views. It gets even more complex that if I go file new document I've now got a third window that's displaying a document so I've got two views which are sharing a context I've now got a third view which has its own context and you've got to manage uh, custom pass panes for each one of those. But if we're talking about the ribbon callbacks, this still has the same class. Doesn't matter what, how many views you've got, it's the same word application, so it's the same callback. VSTO Contrib tries to bring all of this together by introducing a concept of a view model. You basically create, define a view model, and your view model you have one instance of a view model per context. VSTO Contrib will then take care of registering your task pane with each window that's open. It makes sure that your that your callbacks get routed to the correct view model based on which document is open at the time. And it'll also notify you if the window changes. So my view model here, when I activate that, will say I'm currently on this second view if I switch back to the first one, it'll let me know that the view's changed. That way it allows me to interact with the current view that I'm on, or I can deal with all of them at once. So let's have a quick look at the code and how to get started. We're just going to create a sample word add-in. Once we've created the word add-in, all we want to do is add the Visto Contrib NuGet packages. I've got a local cache of them just to make things easy. So I'll install the vistocontrib.word. The README will pop up. It's got some breaking changes, what's new, some terminology that you need to be familiar with. But the interesting parts of this getting started. First step is to create an empty class library. This is so everything is unit testable. If you create a unit test project, you cannot reference your add-in project from another project. It just can't be referenced. Visual Studio won't let you. That makes it impossible to unit test. The idea of Visto Contrib is it allows you to put all of your code in a class library. This makes the actual add-in project just a bootstrapper, essentially. Everything of value is in a class library, which means everything is unit testable. We're going to skip that step at the moment, jump straight to number two, where we create the ribbon extensibility object. The ribbon extensibility object you can read up on 
in MSDN. But essentially, when Office displays a ribbon, it will go and ask all of the add-ins, hey, do you have any extensibility information about this add-in? Um, VSTO Contrib has its own ribbon extensibility, which is the ribbon factory. This gives Visto Contrib a chance to uh, serve up the correct uh, ribbon XML files and also hook into the correct events. You also notice that there's a few lines here for adding WPF support. If you show WPF windows and then you close them, that'll actually close down the WPF dispatcher. We don't want that because when you redisplay the window for a second time, your add in will crash. Adding these two lines will stop that problem. The next line is telling Visto Contrib what assembly contains the view models. By default, it just has this add in, which is the same assembly as your add in project. But if you do follow step one and create a class library, you'll have to basically point Visto Contrib to that assembly. The main reason for this is speed. Visto Contrib could scan all of the assemblies, uh, which is what Visto does out of the box, but that slows things down. If you give it a, a smaller subset of assemblies, it's a lot faster to start up. If we go back to the readme, step two is modifying the startup. At the point of creating the extensibility object, your add-in doesn't actually know or have access to the application it's running in. It's only at the point that this event is fired. So what we have to do is now that the, your add-in has properly started, we have to tell Visto Contrib about the application it's running in and give it an instance of that. And then finally, just to be a good citizen, when we shut down, we want to close, uh, shut down the current application. That's really all there is to it. Um, Visto Contrib will actually hook into the shutdown methods of your add-in properly, and that means that you don't have to worry about cleaning up your ad, uh, the Vis your view models. That'll all be done for you. From this point, it's just up to you to create some view models. I'm not going to do that in this project. I'm going to jump over to the Visto Contrib sample projects. Currently there's two sample projects, but I plan on adding more later. At the moment we're viewing one of the Outlook ribbon view models. You can see that I have to specify the type of ribbon, so an Outlook contact. You've also got many of the others, so the mail read, resend, task, that sort of thing. Um, this is actually makes it quite nice and very easy to know what your view model is targeting. Um, if there's some that aren't supported out of the box, you can actually just go down to the ribbon view model and give it the custom uh, ribbon type. We won't do that at the moment. What we're going to show you is the word add-in. This should be familiar to you. You've seen the, the startup that we just showed you. In this project, I actually have a core project. I've got two main folders. One is the office context, so that basically contains my view model that represents my document. I've also got the WPF controls. So this add-in has a custom task pane, and it uses WPF to render that. VSTO Contrib must use Ribbon XML. You cannot use the VSTO designer with uh, with VSTO Contrib. There's just a, a mismatch in the way that they do things and you cannot, you, they're mutually exclusive, you cannot use one and also use the other. So you must drop down to Ribbon XML. What Visto Contrib does in t return is give you a lot more power behind Ribbon XML. You'll notice here that I've got Get Visible is Ribbon Visible on action as panel shown and get pressed is also panel shown. If you've done much ribbon XML you'll notice that's that's pretty strange. So let's have a look what's going on here. You'll notice that both panel shown and ribbon visible 
are both properties that support notify property changed. So one of the things that VSTO Contrib gives you out of the box is if you raise a property changed event for a property that's bound via ribbon XML, it will automatically invalidate that ribbon control and cause it to reevaluate its state. So that could be uh, drop downs or um, if it's enabled or visible. All you need to do is just raise a property changed and VSTO Contrib has helpers to help you do that. If we start at the top though, there's a couple of things. You'll notice this Office View Model Base. This is not required, but it just gives you a heap of um, helper methods that help you that you might need over the time and notify property changed helpers, that sort of thing. The important interface is actually the iRibbon view model. That one there is generic across all of your view models. It doesn't matter what it's displayed for. It has properties like ribbon UI, which allows you to activate tabs, invalidate ribbon controls and that sort of stuff. You've also got the VSTO factory. The VSTO factory allows you to create VSTO objects that are often a lot more powerful than the interop versions. For example, when my view model is initialized, it will pass me the context that this view model represents. So in our case, we're in Word, that will be a document. So basically, I want to make sure that I've got a document here. If I do, I want to get the VSTO version of the document. The VSTO version of the document has a lot more on it, has selection changed and a heap of different events. I can then hook into the selection changed and do something with that. You'll notice in this selection changed event, I've got this with clom cleanup extension method. What that does is deterministically release com objects when you're finished with them. If you, I've got a blog post on this, but essentially if you do not release the com object, you leave it up to the garbage collector to release that com object for you. This can cause problems. This just allows you to keep in control of everything that's happening. Inside this guy, when I change the selection, I basically am telling a Wikipedia results view model, which is a WPF view model that to issue a search. The WPF view model is actually registered down here in my register task panes method. This comes from the iRegister custom task pane interface. What it does is pass you a delegate. That delegate allows you to call it multiple times if you need to register multiple custom task panes. The delegate basically has a user control factory that allows Visto Contrib to ask for a new instance of that user control at any time. This basically means that we have multiple, this is the, the problem with, uh, with multiple windows. If I have one document that has multiple windows, I need to register my custom task pane each time a new window is open. VSTO Contrib needs to be able to create new instances of the controls so it can uh, properly do it. So we create that factory, give it a result, and that's all there is to it. You'll notice that we actually, so VSTO Contrib gives you a WPF panel host. This allows you to create host WPF user controls inside custom task panes really simply. And that's really, uh, you can have a look at the sample in more depth, but you'll notice in here, uh, we've got a WPF control and then a backing view model. We're using binding and all of the normal things. If I spin this up, we'll go through a few things. First thing you'll notice is that we can click on the panel and it shows and hides our custom view model. We can also create a new window. You can see here that if I show the panel, 
on one, it'll automatically show it on the other. This allows us to keep the panels in sync and give the user a better experience when they've got multiple windows open. And close that down. The next thing I want to show you is the Autofax support. So in here, we've actually got Autofax View Model Factory. Now, by default, when you install it, you would have noticed we actually had a default view model factory. This just means that your view model must contain a parameterless constructor. If I choose the view model factory, I can just pass it a autofac module. The autofac module has a helper, which is register view model types. Uh, that will scan and register all of your office view models and then registering the Autofac view model. At the moment I'm not showing any of this off, but if I instead pass this in, and then I'll go into my view model and I'm newing up the Wikipedia service. If I choose to inject those instead, set a breakpoint and then run this again. You'll notice that I actually have full dependency injection support. My view model is being passed in. The view model has set the Wikipedia service. And I've now got my add-in using dependency injection. And a really weird UI bug. There you go. If I type some text and search it, you see that my add-in picks it up and displays the search results using WPF. That's a quick demo of the capabilities of VSTO Contrib and how to get started. Uh, please post any questions or issues on the GitHub project site and I hope you enjoy using VSTO Contrib. Thanks.